Good Hi. evening. Hello, welcome. And Minnie is here as well. So, hi, my name's Barry. And I'm Jay. And together we are with Tusu Crafts. So, yes, good evening. Um, or good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are. Thank you for watching us. Yes, thank you for joining us. Uh, we are independent Stampin' Up! demonstrators based in the UK. So if you live in the UK, France, Germany, Austria, or the Netherlands, you'll be able to purchase current Stampin' Up! products from our online shop. Uh, we put out two live streams per week with card making and paper craft inspiration. So if you haven't subscribed yet, it's worth considering subscribing to our channel. Um, yes, so let's say hello to people who are in already. Um, so we have Krista, um, hello, Connie, Betty, uh, Debbie, Debbie, Anita, Anita, I think that is Linda, yeah. Nancy, Mum, <laughs> Valerie and Lisa so far as what we can yes. see there. Sylvia, Caroline, or let's see, you're all Lindo, you're all popping in Caroline, now. Caroline, Ma Maureen, thank you so much, Helen. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, so we will be creating a card or two cards maybe uh, with the Freezing Fun bundle, uh, which coordinates with the Freezing Friends dies from the mini catalog. How do you say it? It's the F's. <laughs> yes, it's the that one. <laughs> so yes, so um, hopefully we'll be doing some coloring and some sponging uh, this evening. But before we start, we will do a random draw for this card, which um, we created last Sunday from our live stream. So if you are new to the channel, we do a handmade card giveaway. Uh, at the beginning and at the end of our live stream so do pop in the comment uh, on the replay if you're watching the replay and you'll be put into the random draw for the next live stream so Barry we're yes. gonna do some Let's stuff flip you around there we go and Let's just update that. So yeah, so we only had 13 comments for this one here. So um, so if you'd like to win it, we get a lot of people. We have over 600 views, but only 13 people commented. So um, if you'd like to win, pick pop a comment in. Um, no matter how to say hi. And maybe they be, didn't. Maybe they didn't. Like, yeah, maybe oh, the 600 no. people didn't like it, but Ooh. maybe. Um, and only 13 of you did. <laughs> anyway, but the winner of this card is going to be, it will probably be a regular name. Um, Which would be great. Oh, no, Hannah different one. M. Hannah M. We've Ooh. got a new name. So, Hannah, that card is going to be working its way to you. So, if you want to... Um, Message us with your details. So email us for your details. So we've got it on record. Um, it will be the best way of doing it. And the email is Barry and Jay oh, yes. at mythosocrafts dot com. <laughs> that would help, wouldn't it? So. So yes, congratulations again, Hannah. Um, yes, if you are watching the live, don't forget to pop in and say hello, and we'll put you into the random draw at the end of the live stream. And don't forget to give us a thumbs up to help our channel grow. Good. Excellent. Cool. So yes, so as mentioned, freeze and friends. So we'll flip the camera around and we will crack on. I think there's a few of you that are excited for this one tonight, I think. so. And I saw one comment pop up saying you've ordered it straight away but never used it. And to be honest with you, that's exactly the same with us. Tonight's the first time it's actually really getting a bit of a, a good old use. Yeah, so we're probably going to concentrate on the stamp set for a week or so. Yeah, hopefully. we'll probably see quite a few examples coming out with this now. So, um, yeah, so keep an eye out. Come on. So good. Hi, Sandra. Right, so let's turn you around and... Right, come on, come on. Oh, you don't want to, I've done it again. There we go. Look at the mess on the table already and I haven't even started. Yeah. Okay, so I've got myself some, some scraps, my Whisper White normal my whisper white thick and some scraps for the stamping obviously i'm going to be using the freezing fun stamp set along with the freezing friends dies okay so these if you haven't seen these yet already you get all of these dies inside here and they look you get this one here which is this curvy for nice a stitched edge snow scenes which is perfect again doesn't have to be just for christmas so this is a this is a die which will last all year long 
Um, you can do all sorts of this one here. And these are the stamped images and the dies which you actually get from it. So they are just so cute. Love them. All right, and they're gonna be, we're gonna have a bit of fun playing and coloring with these tonight and over the coming, the coming videos. So that's what you went, that's what we'll be using. Um, if you would like to purchase anything you see us use, you can, to, can do via our online shop and Jay will pop a link into that very soon when he's, um, after his Vedda Cats in the comments. Um, and this one comes with a 10% discount as well. So if you buy these ones, this one and the stamp set and the bundle, to, and the, sorry, the stamp set and the dies together, you get them with a 10% discount. What was that, Anita? Sorry, it's not on my list so far. I'm looking forward to what you um, will be doing with it. And I hope, yes. Well, let's, let's hope. Maybe you'll, we'll just see if we can convert you. There's our task. Let us know at the end. Um, or let us know after you've seen a couple of depth of the videos. So lovely. Um, colours I'm going to be using as well. I'm going to be using Coastal Cabana. And I haven't quite decided yet what one I'm going to be using. It's either going to be Balmy Blue or it's going to be Gorgeous Grape. Actually, I meant to get Highland Heaven, not Gorgeous Grape. Could you get me Gorgeous yeah. Grape? Um, Highland Heaven, please. I Even though they're very similar to each other, but the Highland Heather, I think, is just a... Because it's the uh, Gorgeous Grape is a bright, and the Highland Heather is a subtle. And what I'm doing, I'm just going to show you, is a little tip. What we always do on all of our stamp sets, see, they faded a little bit, but we get, like, a little Sharpie pen, and we write, write B, S on them, so, or R or N, for your bright, subtles, neutrals. And we have, we still have them in our... Uh, it's retired now, you can't get it anymore, but you can in our... Um, in our... Caddy. Caddy, um, ink caddy. They're all in their all in their colour families, so we quite and it's so much easier than for when popping them back into the colour caddy or while you're um, stamping storage. So, right, well, what colour was the gorgeous grape of bright, or is it? So it's easily referenced B and S or N and R where it's going to live and what colour family it comes through. So, a little bit of a tip for you there. Do that with all of your things. They're all starting to some of them are starting to fade a little bit. But just pop a pop an initial in the corner. It's so much easier. Um, so they're the colours which we will be using as well. I have also got some memento. I have got some blends with me. I've got a so I've got a variety of blends, but we have got the what we've we got. We've got balmy blue. We have got smoky slate, cinnamon cider, and. I've left it in Bermuda Bay for our um, for our blends tonight, and I have got myself. I need to make myself some room. I've got myself some kitchen roll. Interesting, you're going. Um, I have got myself a jug of water. A jug. Or a jug. <laughs> a small cup with about a centimetre of water in it. Um, but I've got some water. I have also got myself my sponge brayers and some scrap paper. Okay, so they're the tools which I'm going to be using um, for this evening. So I'm going to start by cutting down my card base because I actually haven't done that yet. So I'm going to cut, cut down my card base. So we've got a Whisper White Thick and I have got this at... 14.6 centimetres, which is five and three quarters of an inch. Five and three quarters inches, not a five and three quarters of an inch. And score that at ten and a half, which is four and one eighth. Okay, that's my card base. And just fold and burnish that. And then I've also got myself a bit of standard Whisper White as well. And this is what I'm going to be doing my brayering and stamping on. So I'm taking this to 8 centimetres by 12.1, by 12.1, yeah. So I'm taking this 2 centimetres smaller than the actual card base. 
So in centimetres, that's eight centimetres by 12.1. Two and a half centimetres, sorry, smaller, not two centimetres, two and a half centimetres, which is two and a half centimetres is one inch. So it's one inch smaller than your card base. So I've actually got myself quite a nice large white layer around the outside. Okay, so we've got half an inch on each, either side, top and bottom, or you'd have, obviously it's two, or it's two and a half centimetres like that. So that's how we do it. So we've got a nice size here. And if anything, I've actually got myself two layers. So I actually might just cut this one down to the same size whilst I've got it. I just need to take a sliver off of that. There we go, that's all I needed. So if I make a mistake, I can make, I've got another one ready. Or if I don't make a mistake, I can make two cards as well. Or Jay can use this piece for later on. We'll see, I don't actually know what he's doing, if he's doing anything. So, we'll see how long it takes me to do, to do my. So I have got my, brought myself in some scrap paper. So I've got my grid paper here. I'm gonna pop my card base to one side and I've got my two brayers. Okay, and we are gonna do some brayering. It's 5 a.m. in Australia. 5 a.m., yeah, I did see that comment pop up earlier and I was thinking, wow, you're up early. <laughs> You've embarrassed that up that early. No, I'm not. So I'm actually going to go with Coastal Cabana for the background. So a bit of an odd colour for a background, but I quite like it. It's an interesting colour to use. And because these are fictional characters, we, I think you can get away with using wacky colours for different things. You don't have to go with your traditional colours for backgrounds. So yeah, I'm gonna go with something different. So with your brayers, if you've not used these before, they are, let me just show you them um, before I put my fingers everywhere. They come in a, in a box, sponge brayers, and you get four sponges. So you get two and obviously the two which are attached and you get two handles. And they're really quite nice. These are actually, I'm sure they've redeveloped these over the over the years because they're, they're different to the first ones which we got. Um, the sponge is actually, is, is, quite, is quite a nice firm sponge. Um, yeah, and they're quite, they're quite nice. I'm really, really enjoying them. But that's what they are. And all you want to do is you just want to gently roll it over the top of your ink pad. Okay, don't want to push into it because if you push into it, what you're going to end up doing is... If I show it, you'll get, if you push into it, you're going to potentially squeeze down. And what we've known is that people have pushed so hard that they've scraped this plastic part into the ink pad and then scraped all of their ink pad up. And then that was with the older ones, which I think were a bit, so, a bit softer. Because these are firmer, you can't actually squish them in as much. So, um, but just be aware of that. You don't want to push into it. All you want to do is you just want to gently roll them out roll it over the top just very gently just to pick up some ink and also and then roll it roll it pick it up and then roll it pick it up roll it and then you'll get coverage across the entire sponge whereas if you just go like that you're just going to get it in the areas which is touching the ink pad and it's not actually going to touch the top part so make sure that you roll it pick it up roll it pick it up and then to transfer the ink on. And that's the same technique you wanna do when actually popping it down onto the paper as well. And again, a lot of people would just go backwards and forwards and then wonder why they're getting lots of lines. Um, and that's probably the reason why you're getting it. So if you get lots of lines, then make sure you pick it up. And again, don't. the, the key to this is don't push too hard. That is the key, okay? So I'm just gonna ink this up again soft and gentle to start off with, build the colour up slowly, okay? And always start off the page and go the full full width of the page or whatever, however you want to do it. Pick up and then start again. So let's crack on. So I start off, take off some of that excess and then we're just gonna then, and then I'm just moving it down as I go, getting lighter as I get to the bottom so I get a bit of a gradient, okay? And then I go back up, increasing my pressure again as I go back up again and then start a bit heavier and then come down, decrease the pressure just to get a bit of a gradient, okay? And then you start to build up these colors. 
And obviously that's nowhere near where I want it to be. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to pick up some more ink. And then I'm going to do the same. So it's the same principle, just going to start off and then bring it down. And obviously I'm going down and I'm picking up every time I get down here and then going up the top and then going back down, pick up and down. And I, don't, and I go quite quick, as you can see. I don't waste the time, I just get the ink on there, but I'm not pushing too hard. And you kind of, the more you do it, you'll start to blend those lines out. I, I just need to call it. You might have a paw print on your card, Hannah. <laughs> oh yeah, Hannah, if you're watching, sorry. I'm, um, please let us know if you're allergic to cats, because Tom has just decided to see, so I'd sit on it. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, we should do a warning. Yeah, we should do a warning, actually. <laughs> yeah, if you are allergic to cats, then maybe let us know, because obviously um, the cats are very active within our craft room. <laughs> they like to help. So I'm just picking <laughs> it up. They like to put their stamp on it. <laughs> boom, boom. All right, and I'm just bringing this in. I'm just going down and getting lighter and towards the bottom. And there we go. You can see you just build up those layers. So I've gone from that to that, okay, with a gradient coming down. And that's it. So that's all you're going to do with those ones there. I'm not going to use the Highland Heather. I tried that earlier on um, and I wasn't quite happy with it. So I'm, I was going to do a gradient and stuff. But what I could have done is I could have gone with the Highland, I could have gone with the Highland Heather first at the top. Maybe I'll do that on the second piece, actually. Um, okay, I do, I, I'm going to do what I'm going to carry on with first because it needs to dry. And then whilst that's drying, I can then try it out with the Highland Heather and then the Coastal Cabana mixed together. One thing I also like to do when doing sponge backgrounds, because sometimes if you if you do sponging, you might, might you may still see some imperfections in this. And obviously there are still some little lines. If you've used the sponges, then you may get some blemishes on it. Um, one way which I like to try and help diffuse that and take away any of those um, imperfections potentially and make it look a little bit more natural like it is actually meant to be there is bring in some water and do some water splats. So you can either do this with the um, water painters so you can pick up some water and splat it down or all you want to do, put your finger in some water and, and just flick it around. Angle how you're doing it as well, otherwise you end up with the angles in all exactly the same direction. And then it starts to do, it starts to pull. Grab your tissue and just roll it over the top. Now it just will take off any of your excess water which is sitting on your card. And then what you've gone and done is you're just gonna put some water splats on here. You will need to let this dry because obviously it does soak in and it does blemish and it does raise up. So just need to let it dry for a sec or for a couple of minutes or pop, get heat tool to it and dry it or I'm gonna ask Jay to pop it on the radiator for me. Yeah. Um, and that's how it, but could you actually just pass me that one over yeah. which I've already done? Just like magic. <laughs> See, I think I've left it on the radiator a little bit too long because it's buckled a little bit now. It's on. <laughs> yeah. Um, the heating's kicked on as well. But, um, yeah, so just be careful. Don't leave it on the road. Don't leave it on the heat too long because it does buckle. Otherwise, because it's water and paper. But there we go. There's the first one which I did. And that's how it will dry up eventually as it starts to, as the water starts to, as the paper dries. Okay. So I'm going to do another one and I'm going to try it with the Highland Heather first and let's see how this goes. So we're going to start with the Highland Heather. So remember we start, don't push in and just roll it across, picking it up. And let's see what it looks like with a two-tone. I'm not sure how this is going to turn out because I haven't planned this. And off and then we'll bring it down. And I'm only going to go down a little a little way on this because I want it to be at the top. So and then the rest of it is going to be the coastal cabana. You 
Yeah, those water splats on it. I saw, I saw some of them. What a fun technique. Uh, yeah, the water splats are a, a good way of getting rid of your blemishes with your ink blending, um, which then make the in, ink, like I say, make the ink blending look more when you've got, if you've got lines or you've gone too heavy with it and you've got some smudges and it would, it just then all blends it, to, it, it, it brings it together, it ties it all in, in my opinion anyway. That's why I quite like water blat splatting on ink blended backgrounds. Okay, let's see how that goes. Let's still bring in Coastal Cabana again here now. And I'm just starting just underneath that Coastal Cabana, uh, underneath the, high, um, the Highland Heather, just so it don't, I don't want them to mix because if it's when they mix when I did it earlier on and I mixed them and it didn't it didn't look right and that's when I realized I should have done the two two together two separate sorry and I'm gonna bring the Highland Heather in one more time and then I'll blend, kind of blend it out a little bit more and come down into the Coastal Cabana a tiny bit more just to blend that colour in a little bit. And there we go. I think that works. So we will um, grab my water again. Actually, no, let's, um, can I? Oh, no, I'll do it with my finger. That's fine. That should be all right now, probably. Okay. So I'm going with less splats on this one here. And we'll take that off. Let me just show, show the scene of one which I did earlier on where I did it. An, an interesting technique that this is the one which I did when I put done it all in Coastal Cabana and then I popped the Highland Heather over the top. And what I've ha what happened is that the Highland Heather actually kind of stuck more to the water droplets and shone through so, and 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 changed them changed them the color of that. So that's another it's another different it's a different way of doing it. So if you want to have different colored water droplets then obviously you've got to try and pick a colour which isn't going to interfere too much with the background, but it did change them like that. So there we go. There's my three like this. So now what we need to do is we need to um, <coughs> we need to make something with these. I'm just going to pop another bit, a few more splats down the bottom down here. And then take off. So a bit of tissue just to roll over. Like that. Good. All right, so I pop my water to one side so I don't spill it on the computer. And I'm just going to pop my lids on my ink pad so that I don't drop those. Excellent. All right, so next thing I want to do is I'm going to stamp my my bunny, bunny on skis. So then that can dry and then I can do some die cutting. So I'm just going to stamp this in Memento. So we're using Memento because I'm going to be colouring in blends. So if you're unfamiliar with this, then you use the opposite medium to what you're actually colouring in. So if you're colouring with alcohol, you want to use a water-based ink. That's correct, Jay, isn't it? I've just got this done desk out of myself. Yes. Yeah. So you want to use a water-based ink. And if you're, colour, if you're using um, 
watercolour pencils, you want to use a permanent ink. So you want to use something which is like stays on or an archival ink or something that we obviously stays on is available through fire or online shop. You want to use something which is more permanent so it doesn't react. So you want to use the opposite to what you're colouring with. So don't use a permanent or an alcohol based if you're using colouring with alcohol. And if you're colouring with water, you want to use you don't want to use a water-based ink because the two will react. So you want to use a permanent ink. I hope, I think I've explained that correctly. We'll see. Just think opposites. So that's that. That's just going to dry up for a moment. And then what I want to do is I just want to bring myself in a scrap bit of paper, which is a long, uh, just a strip, because I want to cut myself some... I want to cut myself my heels. Are they alive? Heels? No, I'm not starting to sing. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. I nearly did. I think just need you. Don't, you don't want to hear me sing. Um, so I'm just going to cut myself a hill. Okay. And I love these ones as well because they're double stitched. Good. Thank you, Christopher. I saw that there. I can move this away now, I don't actually need. You can see our lovely table. <laughs> we'll put this down, so we've got the Suki. Which the Suki, um, our Suki actually approves of the Suki because I, before we come on live, I caught her licking it. <laughs> did she really? I did. <laughs> She was licking it. Now, the only reason I've just realised why she was licking it, she's got a bit of a plastic fetish. She loves to lick plastic. And I've just seen what's on the corner here. There's a bit of plastic tape. And that's what she would have been licking. But I called her and said, what can I hear? And Suki was licking the Suki. But she was licking this bit of tape on the side. Yeah, she's weird. She's got, she, loves, she just loves licking plastic. And rubbing her nose up against it. She's a weird cat. So I'm just going to pop that in. I'm just going to show you. Can you see how I've done that? I've just popped that in like so. And I'm just, I just want the bottom part. I don't want it to be too, too tall. We'll just run that for it. And those of you who are who are wondering why can't I get my plates flat? It's just purely the amount of the amount we use them. We've done nothing special with these. These are brand new plates as well. These are we only we've only had these a short while, um, but you can see the amount of cutting which we do, and they're now flat. They they go they go bow to initially to start off with, but they will then you just need to use them. Just use them. So if you've got buckled buckle plates, you're not crafting enough. <laughs> Well, you're not die cutting enough, should I say? Um, we do an awful lot. So that's what that one, that that hill one looks like, and I, I just love it because it's got the stitched on both both sides. Okay. Buckled magnet is my problem. Yes, um, Lindell. Um, yeah, the buckled magnet is. Happy it is, yeah. Ours, we've used ours an awful again quite a lot. It does, it does buckle because obviously you cut into the magnet. Um, I have tried it. I'm gonna. I'm not sure. This isn't recommended. Um, I this isn't stamping up approved or thing, but I am gonna try it and see what it's like when cutting the other side as well, like you would do with your plates. We rotate our plates. And actually see whether or not it makes any difference. Obviously, the problem with this side is that it's not self-healing mat. Um, but we're going to try it. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, then we've we've just wait, obviously we've wasted the mat. But if we can try and help all of you, then that's great. Obviously, help, if we can help everyone else save some money, then we're happy with that. Um, but we'll see. We'll let you know what happens if we cut it the other side and if that kind of flattens it out. But they obviously they do recommend that you you cut in different areas. Try not to cut in one particular area on the on the magnetic plate. 
but try and cut towards the outside and try not just to, and that will then even the pressure out, hopefully. But let's see, I'm gonna do it, and we'll see if it actually makes any difference, but it's not recommended, and they haven't said to do it. It's just something we're gonna do. So if you do follow us, do it at your own risk. Okay, just a little bit of a disclaimer there. <laughs> So that's that. We'll bring this in, and then what this is going to do is this is going to sit over the bottom. So obviously we've got the gradient down here, and that's just going to then sit, that's just going to cover it so it goes completely white like a snow hill. I want to cut this down to ten and a half. No, I want to cut this down to ten centimeters. And then that's just gonna, and I actually want it to overhang as well. And I am going to, where's my memento ink? Memento is there. And I'm gonna stamp. Wee! <laughs> Wee! Um, on it because we're gonna have the, the bunny on the skates, on the skates, on the skis, going down the hill. So it's going. Wee! Okay, another thing as well, I'm gonna just share with you. Um, depending on how you put your stickers on your stamp sets, especially when it comes to sentiments, if you have put them on slightly wonky, like I have, then you need to be aware of that. So I would recommend that you always stamp your sentiment first on a scrap bit of paper and try, and with, uh, try it on a line and see how it looks straight with a stamp but then I know that when I've actually then done it I can see that it's actually slight to me that's slightly wonky you can see the the W is higher than the E so when I'm stamping this on I need to counteract that so I need to make sure that I just probably bring my W down slightly so just a little bit of a tip when you're doing sentiments just stamp on a bit of scrap paper first and see just to make sure that you've got got it lined up because that sentiment could could make or break a project in my well, in my opinion. I know it did on my prototype and stuff. Okay, I need to make sure I mention that. And so I'm just going to counteract that a little bit and put the angle the W down ever so slightly. And we have a straighter sentiment. I'm happy with that. It's not does to my eye. It's not so like oh my god, that's really wonky. So good, and then that's gonna then go over the top of that one, like so. So we're gonna be popping that on like that, that on like that. And I want it now, I do, I, I've done it on purpose to actually overhang, because I wanted the heel to overhang underneath. We're gonna do some coloring now with the blends. So I'm just going to do some basic colouring, nothing, nothing special. Um, I'm just going to come in and I'm going to use the cinnamon cider here for the skis. And I'm using the bullet points. And this is the light one which I'm using here. See, so with, the, with the background, you could have a real fun session doing loads and loads of backgrounds. And then you could then, with this, this is a, a this particular stamp set, is then you would then stamp a load of these things out, whack the, t whack the TV on, and just maybe just sit there at one evening and just colour. And then you can then, once you've got all of those bits together, you can then put everything, then merge everything together once you're done. That's kind of what I would suggest you do with this particular stamp set because you can you can colour a load of these animals. Pop some music on, pop the TV on and just get carried away colouring. So I'm just using the smoky slate here for the bunny's bunny body. I probably will come in and do 
some dark on this with some shading. Could I have a pink, please, Jay? Yeah. For the bunny's nose. For the nose, the furry flamingo. Light. <laughs> Thank you. Um, What's everyone saying, Jay? Uh, they are loving the colors and like and share on Facebook. Thank you so much, everyone. Yes, thank you very much. Love the background. They love the splatter effect as well. Yeah, I like the splatter effect. I don't really like it. It's a, it's a really nice, fun technique. There we go, we've got the body colours, so we're just going to come in maybe with the grey for a moment here and I'm just going to pop some, well I think some shading maybe around his, around his bum, underneath his armpits, underneath his collar here. And then I'll go back in with the light. Blend, blend all of that out a little bit. Okay. It must be cold this evening, so say that the radiators have kicked on a little bit. And Minnie's just found out that the radiator's kicked on because we've got a radiator bed and it's the first time this year, this winter, that I've actually seen her hop into it. <laughs> so just a little bit of shading. coloring and what what's on your wish list for the, your next color yes yes yeah. we I still we, we we still got some on our wish list we've got a lot we've got majority of them haven't we but yeah there we go and we've got this we've got to finish off with a pink nose haven't we um i'm gonna go with a bermuda bay scarf because there isn't a coastal cabana blend is there Jane? i do not think so Um, and we'll go with the dark, and I will just put a bit of shade in behind there, come up underneath his neck. Betty said her wish list is very long. <laughs> <laughs> It's just the little subtleties with the colouring which then just make a difference because you just get some, some shading. Um, what colour should I do the, do the, um, do the pole? I'm going to leave the pole white and it can have white gloves as well. So there we go. There is, there's my, my bunny. So we're just going to die cut, we're going to die cut him out. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it the way, I'm going to do it on the back side. So it will mark it, because I have tried it already, but we'll see what happens and we'll see, over time, we'll see if this actually works and helps flatten it out. Um, let me see. You can, but try, can't we? I do need to stand up for a moment to go over this. Uh, 
bit. I'm going to do it more to the edge. Um, where's my plate? It's gone. Where's my plate? See, it's not going to flatten out just on this one pass, but if we continue doing this, it may, it may help the issue. See, it's still cut it perfectly fine. There's no issues with the cutting there. Oh, good, Carrie. I just saw that pop up there. You received a card. Well done. Lovely. Yeah, we um we're a little bit behind in sending some of the cards from the winners. I should have sent I should have sent them on Monday, but I haven't sent some of the most recent ones. So they they will be they're in a pile to go, but I will get round to to doing it soon. Okay. It's my fault. And then that's gonna go there. I am going to stamp a tree. I want a tree. I will have a green, please, yes. Perhaps you want a tree? Where's the stamp set? Oh, sorry, I've got it. There you go. It's 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 on your right hand side, all alone. <laughs> mm -hmm. Whatever. Because I'm so organised. I've got. We're gonna do a tree because. Okay, we'll see. I may not like the tree bean on there, but I'm going to do it anyway because if I don't use it for this one, I can use it for something else. So, and this is really, the tree's really, really easy to colour. So Jay has given me, what's he given me? Shaded spruce. So again, I like to colour with the light first. And I'm just going to go in... So this is I think this is why I like winter winter crafting and um, colouring because you can use a lot of white so there's, you don't have to colour everything because it's just snow so <laughs> <laughs> you think so oh, I've got all that image to colour you don't actually have all the right image to colour. Something heavy at night, which helps flatten it out. Okay, all right then. Cool, thank you. Yeah, all we, right. We thought of leaving it upside down. The yeah, as well. we thought about doing that. So, all right. Well, if you've got, maybe I won't continue with that then. I think it's already been tried and tested, and you think it's going to ruin it. I, I, I kind of expect. I, I didn't really know. I didn't really expect it to. I wasn't expecting miracles, but I thought, well, if it's like it, like, like the plates, let's see. But yeah, I'm what I'm done now is I've got the dark one, and I'm just going underneath where you would have the overhang of the of the branches above in the dark, and then I'll go back over with the with the lights to blend blend those two out. A very green card tonight. Uh, I gave you shaded spruce because I thought it might, um, if you put it behind the rabbit. Yeah. Hopefully, it will make him pop. make him pop out a little bit more. So we've got the die, which is here. Bring the sookie back in again. I've been on 45 minutes. Wow. Maybe we'll all just be one card this evening. <laughs> yeah. I think so. Okay, so we're going to go back round and we're going to do it over. Over there like that. Let's 
cut that for it. So we've got a hair right there. Yes, they changed, um, and he said they changed the blends, how he purchased them in this catalogue. He used to be able to buy them individually. <laughs> oh, well, you, as a pivot, you can't buy the blends as a complete set, like the mark. Sorry, I, mis I, misread, I misread you completely. Ignore what I just said. They didn't change that. I thought you were about buying them individually. Yes, uh, a, 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 yeah, a blend package. That would be for, yeah, well, that'd be like quite... The many marvelous like, marvelous Yeah, that would be quite an expensive package, but if they offered it with a discount and people were wanting to do that, then it would probably work quite nicely. So that's that, and then the tree... I'm thinking there, Jay, what do you reckon? Tree... Because the behind was that Bermuda Bay? It yeah. looks shaded sprucey. I think behind there it looks quite nice. So it's whizzing down the hill with the he's weeing down the hill. No, he's not weeing down the hill. <laughs> um, Maybe do a small <laughs> one as well. He's not weeing. Oh, there is a small one. Yeah. <laughs> do you know when you just say something and you think, no, nope, I shouldn't have said that? <laughs> oh my god. So we'll do a small tree. Don't eat yellow snow. Yeah. I'm not gonna get a yellow I'm not gonna get the Daffodil Delight blend <laughs> and do any yellow on this card whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna go in with the shaded spruce once again. In between. So in smaller areas, obviously you want to be, so sometimes just dabbing the the markers in and the shaded spruce is a very juicy shaded spruce. And just building up some of that dark layer there. There we go. You know what would look really nice on this in a moment, Winker Stella. So this isn't the type. Well, I, I said at the beginning, this is one of the, this is a card that you could. Well, you could do a lot of the colouring, stamping, and then colouring, and sit in front of the TV and do some stuff. Um, I suppose once you've got all of your colouring sorted. It's quite, it's, and your background's done, it's quite an easy card to construct, but you wouldn't want to be doing mass production of these um, in one go. But I'm actually really liking how this is turning out. And I obviously people are obviously are, are, are worrying about the, the plate buckling, but in my opinion, it still is a nice magnetic plate. Um, I think it just needs to be used a little bit, and hopefully, it will then start to um, to level out. But we'll see. I still think it's definitely a it's it's a good product. So that's that, and then. Like that. I think that's how we're going to go. We're going to have a tree front and back of this bunny. Or should we go? Nice. I'm, I'm, I'm liking preferring there, I think. 
Yeah. Good. All right. That's um, that's Winkostella, please. Yeah. I feel like I'm a surgeon. Winkostella. <laughs> And we've got to put some wink on this, haven't we? We've got to do some, especially on the white parts of this tree. So we've got the snow glistening. Snow is glistening. Have you got your um, Christmas radio on yet? No, Christmas radio hasn't come onto the car yet, but I do keep looking for it. <laughs> I'm sure this time last year, there were already had Christmas stations on the, on the radio. Um, because I remember going to when we went to Germany for our on stage events um, in Dortmund and Germany last year. I remember I'd already know that I'd already been listening to Christmas music in the car. Got some very funny looks from people driving past me as well at times. <laughs> See when you start when you when you do Christmas crafting from about July, June onwards, you're just constantly in the in the Christmas zone. Well, I am anyway. There we go. So we have now, I think that just finishes that off quite nicely. Is that, can you see that on camera? There we go. I think that... So both of those. All right, so we are going to now finish this off. Some lucky person is going to win this card as well tonight. I'm going to finish this off with some dimensionals. Actually... How do I want to do this? I'm going to go flat down. Um, some glue. See, if you're posting these, you want to, you need to think about the postage and the height. If you're hand delivering these, I would have put, I would put, potentially pop this on some dimensionals as well and I would probably go a couple of layers of dimensionals this and a dimensional and then the bunny and the heels on dimensional so I'd really layer this up obviously you do need to be mindful of your your postage costs as well Good, excellent. I'm not the only one then. I'm sure there's a load of you that are going. Oh, too early. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Tina. <laughs> That's that. Yeah, this is the first card we've made. Well, I, I did make one card. Can you've you got my swap there, Jay? Which uh, yes. can you? Um, I have used it once since we had it. You so I'm, need to find it. Um, you know what I'm like. Yeah, he's right in front of him, but he won't still won't find it. Actually, I don't actually know where it is. It's been sat on the it's been sat on the counter for, you were, for you about were a week. Um, last night. Yeah. I won't find it. Just to prove you wrong. It's how I tidy it and I forget where I put it. <laughs> so that's gone down like that. Just tucked it underneath, um, so I'm just gonna now pop some glue on the back of this. In like that, with that, that's gonna go down. Obviously, if you wanted to do this as well, and you wanted to make use of the designer set, obviously to make this a slightly quicker card. And wanted to make use of the of the best designer series paper sale currently at the moment. You could quite easily the snowflake splendor oh. would work lovely with this because you've got some really nice splatty backgrounds, technical terms, splatty backgrounds. 
um, and you could just cut yourself some real just simple layers out and just pop them in there and then build them up and that would work lovely with this as well but if you want to have a bit of a play with the technique then this is perfect but you can make it easier um, I remember at the moment during the month of October the um, designer series paper sale Snowflake Splendor is one of the one of the stem papers on it and you can get it with a 15% discount so so there we go and then that's going to go in there so I would normally probably put you up on I'm going to pop it I'm going to pop it on dimensionals and Obviously, if the person that wins it and it um, takes it to the next layer, I may have to take it off and make it on to um, make it flatter. But we will see. I think we haven't had too many issues with the things because I've kept the whole card relatively small. Um, snips, please, Jay. I oh, know it's right. I've got yeah, you spine. got one, sure. That's right. I've got some here which have already been cut. Also, uh, I don't know if it's flowers for every season on the sale. I don't think I'm it is. I'm not sure it is, no. But there is a design on there. That one. Oh, yeah. Flowers for every season, design a series paper. That would work quite nicely. Trimming the down, town. <gasps> Trimming the town for the hills and the scenes at the background. Yeah, there's loads of papers, which I think you could work quite nicely. They've got some really nice background papers this time, so actually help you make some nice scenes. Um, yeah. And trimming the town is included in the trimming the town sale. as well is included in the sale. So, if you like it, then you can um, you can stock up and might as well just save yourself to 10, fifteen percent. It's fifteen percent more you can spend on some more goodies. And obviously, anyone that have you got them the gilded gems, Jay? Gilded gems. Oh yes. Yeah. Just need to bring this in to show you. Anyone who purchases from us, um, so if you live within the Fran if you live within the UK, France, Germany, Netherlands, and Austria, anyone who places an order with us and it's more than fifty pounds, you will also be receiving a packet of of I can't find of gilded gems. <laughs> which Jay can't find, um, free of charge. So you will obviously get a handmade thank you card from us as well. It was upside down. Do you want to get the thank you card out as well? Yeah. So you will receive a whole packet of gems. These gems, for, these are worth £6.50 and you will get these free of charge um, with any orders over £50. Any orders under £50, so you'll, you'll still receive, you'll, you'll get a thank you card from us as well and a little sampler or something. And these are your thank you cards, which you will be receiving this month. Okay, so if you'd like one of these with a packet of gems, pop an order in. Excellent, so there we go. There is my cards for you tonight using the Freezing Friends stamp set and dies for you there. And with a little bit of dimension, and it's really, and it's obviously it's suitable for. I think that's suitable for postage. So there we go. So somebody is now going to win this card. So if you'd like to win it, you've got your comments in here, um, and we are going to do pick a winner. So stay tuned. Jay is going to come over to me um, very soon. I actually didn't give him any warning tonight of when I was going. Um, Thing. Are you going to do a card or are you? No, I no. think it's eight o'clock. So. Yeah, we'll leave it tonight. We're doing, so we've been on an hour. So Jay can save his one for Sunday evening. I can show you what I've been colouring. Yeah, okay. Another, well, whilst I'm setting this up, Jay can show you the other cards which we've made and what he's been colouring as well. So, yes, so um, part of our team swap, Barry created this card on the Vera Vanilla Note card, which is quite cool with a bit of sponging in the middle. So um, as always, take off any excess. And I think what he's done is when he first went into the note card is he used the middle because he knew that it was gonna get covered. So any uh, marks or yeah. texture <laughs> will be concentrated <laughs> in the middle, which is covered. So you have the seal. It's not a walrus, it hasn't got the thingy. Okay, so yeah, so seal on the ice um, 
iceberg uh, on there. So it's quite. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what it is. What is it? It's a bit of ice. It's, not it's ice. Well, you don't know what's underneath. <laughs> it's on water. You don't know what's underneath it. No, there you go. So yeah. So a uh, simple <laughs> card um, with coloring with the stamping blends as well, and. Um, whilst I was commenting and um, watching Barry create as well, I've just been coloring these two lovely penguins. Oh, look at those, they're cute, aren't they? I wanted to make power penguins, like Power Rangers in different colors. <laughs> yeah, do it. Something like that as well, just yeah. dancing on the hill. So you could use the same layer and you could use layout and you could just use anybody. Dancing on ice. Dancing on ice. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> boom boom. Um, yeah. See, I don't know whether or not you get that over in any other in any of the our other countries, but it's a programme here, Dancing on Ice, which comes out in January. Love it. Is it, it still going on? I think so, why? Who mm. knows at the moment? So yes, so somebody's now gonna win this. Cool. So good. We will turn you round. And let me just um Oh. Pink like this. That's good. So, cute. so the winner of this is going to be drum roll. Good luck. Good luck, everyone. Uh, Lisa, yeah. Lisa, hey, <laughs> excellent, Lisa. That card is working its way to you. Superb. Congratulations, Lisa. So yeah, so if you are watching the replay, please do pop in a comment. Or if you didn't win during the live, do come back and pop in a comment in the actual video. So you'll be put into the uh, random draw next live. Either Barry will recreate another card like this or just one from our stash, which we've blogged or uh, put up on challenges. And um, yes, yeah. so um, anything that we've created in the last month or so. Good. We do or have, even the card here. Or even the card <laughs> there, yes. So, yes, don't forget to hit that like button, uh, subscribe and share our video to help our channel grow. And don't forget, you can order Stampin' Up! products from our online shop as well. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. Congratulations, Lisa. Well done. And we will see you on Sunday, Sunday. at 7. See you later. Thank you. Take care. Bye.